Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 21st, 2017. I have a special announcement. A lot of my viewers for the TDD Report also watch ITL from Muzzle Mike. It's the In the Lawn Report. He's feeling a little bit under the weather this week, so we wanted to let you know. Um, and he asked me to uh, tell you guys that he's feeling a little bit under the weather and there won't be a report this week, but hopefully he'll feel well enough next week to, uh, to put out the ITL report. So. Get well soon, Muzzle Mike. First up, uh, these first two stories are from my friend Thomas H. Sanphobic Coding Technology. This is the Department of Defense YouTube channel. And evidently, with uh, operating 8,000 different craft in uh, desert environments, I think it's probably more than just the United States. It's probably various countries, but 8,000 helicopters um, with turbine rotors are having a lot of problems with desert operations because of the fact these turbines are supposed to last like 6,000 hours and only getting 400 hours out of them before the sand is just uh, making these rotors uh, needing to be replaced. So what they're doing is they show a little test facility where they're going to try to test new coatings on the rotors so that they can ingest sand and not be damaged or last uh, quite a bit longer. I mean, even if they could get it up to half the normal time to 3,000 hours versus 400, I mean, that's that's extreme maintenance. So if you get a chance, all the links to everything that I'm talking about will be down below in the comments. But this is the Department of Defense Sanphobic Coding Technology. It's a very short video, about 2 minutes, uh, 14 seconds. And uh, next up is from Space.com and uh, JAXA, Japan X. They are working on a space junk solution. Space junk solution Japan would use a tether to nab debris and destroy it. This is uh, from the website space.com. The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency will test an early space junk removal tether prototype using its HTV-6 robot cargo ship as seen in the artist's illustration. The cargo ship launched to the International Space Station in December 2016. This uh, tether produces an electric field and the way they're talking about it, they can either guide in or snag. I, I've seen some animations, and if you scroll down in this article, you can actually see an animated video. It's Japanese um, text on it, but it's still, I mean, basically you're just seeing how it operates. So if you skip around in the video, you can actually see what they're, they're uh, talking about here. And they're thinking this cable will actually snag some of the space debris. And then when they collect enough of it up in this uh, one chamber on the one end of the tether, they'll basically just cut it loose and let it burn up in the atmosphere. And then whatever's left will probably just splash down in a, a large ocean area away from civilization and stuff like that. So. Um, they are actually working on the space junk. I thought at first maybe it was just setting up a huge magnetic field just to induce drag into the nearby particles, but I guess they're actually snagging and collecting them. That seems to be a little bit more difficult because some of those uh, space junk pieces are traveling even faster than a, a speeding bullet. Of course, now if you match the speeds with, depending on what, how much uh, ability you have to match speed with them, you know, you can take care of that. But um, just how practical it is, well, we'll have to see with the tests and what they do. And next from CNN, SpaceX returns to flight nails rocket landing. This is a really good one here because now SpaceX has actually seemed to get all their act together after a four and a half month hiatus and even stuck the landing on the barge. I remember before that was a real problem with being able to get the landings to come in the correct way too. So what they're going to be working on next is uh, I guess they're the contractor to um, get involved in a lot of these uh, Iridium satellites. Uh, a little more than an hour after launch, Musk announced that all 10 Iridium satellites were successfully deployed into orbit. Iridium is using the satellites to develop a revamped voice and data communications network, dubbed NEXT. About 80 Iridium NEXT satellites are scheduled to be deployed, and SpaceX is committed to carrying at least 70 of them. Iridium says the NEXT satellites delivered to lower Earth orbit are designed to provide real-time connections between people, organizations, and assets, and from anywhere. Next, we'll replace the world's largest commercial satellite network of low Earth orbit satellites and will be one of the largest tech upgrades in history. So, help with communication and stuff like that. And maybe even, uh, I think it has to do with uh, internet communication too. It'll actually aid, aid in communication. It says uh, in September, a rocket carrying a satellite to be used by Facebook to bring internet access to remote areas of the world <coughs> Excuse me, exploded while awaiting launch. So, hopefully, they'll get that up um, on one of the next launches now that it's uh, working a little bit better. Facebook is in partnership with French satellite firm Utel, yeah, Utelsat Communications. The satellite called Amos 6 was owned by Israeli company Spacecom. And last up, Chinese Germans seek to turn Chernobyl wasteland into solar park. 
Now, this is kind of a great idea because a lot of areas that are contaminated, such as Fukushima or Chernobyl or other places like that, you got to realize that they move people out of those places, not necessarily because it's dangerous right away. It may have a low level of radiation that would take years and years to affect anybody, but nonetheless, that means you can't live there as far as permanent residency, but people that are just working there for maybe weeks or months at a time, that would be no problem, especially if you rotated people in and out. So what better place, as long as the weather's cooperative enough, obviously, to uh, put a uh, solar park. So it says here, Chinese and Germans, this is from Bloomberg, Chinese and Germans are among dozens of investors t taking Ukraine up on its offer to turn the grounds of one of the world's worst nuclear disasters into a massive solar park. Thirteen international investors are among 39 groups seeking Ukrainian permission to install about 2 gigawatts of solar panels inside the radiation exclusion zone surrounding the defunct Chernobyl nuclear plant, according to the Minister of Eco Ecology and Natural Resources, Ostep Samarak, and I hope I didn't slaughter that pronunciation. Two gigawatts is almost the capacity of two modern nuclear reactors, although atomic power, unlike solar, works day and night. So, And it says, we have received requests from businesses that are interested in renting land for building solar panel stations. Samaric said in a phone interview with Kia, we are now not looking to profit from land use, we are looking to profit from investment. So, you know, if the, if the land's not going to be able to be useful for permanent habitats and uh, habitats and um, residences for people at least for probably you know maybe decades or centuries why not use it for that and just uh, have workers come in and you know obviously use the right kind of protection give them radiation badges and stuff like that but uh, people don't realize how much you're exposed to radiation anyway cosmic radiation is bombarding you all the time if you're going into old buildings like old historic church buildings or stuff like that made out of granite rock a lot of that is very radioactive it would probably freak you out if you carried a Geiger counter with you and saw some of these old uh, marble buildings and stuff like that how much radiation they put off but it still actually does not amount to any more than maybe if you spend a lot of time in these old buildings it might not even amount to a one ch chest x-ray a year as far as the amount of radiation you're exposed to so um, radiation is not necessarily that bad of a deal. It's around us all the time and we live with it. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.